Dear viewers, welcome you all to our show, OSA, that is the Orthopedic Solution Academy. Hope you all are well during this COVID-19 pandemic situation by wearing masks and keeping distance with each other. Dear viewers, first, uh, we want to mourn and pray for those COVID victims uh, in India as because of uh, they are facing great crisis uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, may Almighty help them uh, to improve their condition. Dear viewers, today our topic is uh, the deformity correction by Elizarov. And our honorable speaker is the legendary Elizarov surgeon in Bangladesh, the Professor Mufakarul Barisar. I would like to request our honorable speaker, Professor Mufakarul Barisar, to join with us. Thank you, uh, Ranveer, for introducing me. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Dear viewers, uh, we have uh, three learned academic experts. Uh, one of them is very prestigious, the president of Bangladesh Orthopedic Society, as well as the secretary of Assami and the director of NITOR, Professor Gonemula, sir. I would like to request Professor Gonemula, sir, to join with us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you for joining with Thanks. us. Dear viewers, so we have uh, Professor Novikov, sir, a very learned academic person from the uh, Kurgan Russian Institute of Elizarov. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Welcome. Navikov, sir, welcome to our show. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir. And the last one is Dr. Shamsul Huda, a very dynamic and enthusiastic Elizabeth surgeon, uh, the Joint Secretary of Assami India uh, from Patna, India. I would like to request Dr. Shamsul Huda to join with us. Uh, welcome, sir. Welcome to our show. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tanvi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, dear viewers, we all know that uh, the deformity is a great challenge for all orthopedic surgeons. Uh, we cannot solve this problem by a traditional way. So we need some magical way, and that is the Elizarov. So we don't want to spend any more time. We just want to see how we can overcome this deformity by the magical Elizarov with the magical speaker from Bangladesh, Professor Mafakarul Barisar. I would like to request Professor Mafakarul Barisar to start his magnificent presentation. Professor Barisar, please. One minute, okay. Yes, yes. There is any problem? No problem, no problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. No problem. So you can start. Inshallah. Now it is visible. Yes, sir. But yes, uh, sir. you have to maximize it, sir. You have to make it full screen. I have done it full screen. Here I can uh, see in my laptop the full screen. Again, I will go but, back. Okay. Okay, sir. No? No, yet not, sir. It's coming. Yet not? It's One coming. Yes, day. it's okay. It's, it's, coming, it's okay, it's sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, sir. So, it's okay. so uh, uh, my dear friend, uh, dear uh, Godimullah, director of the institute, Professor, Professor uh, Novikov and Shamsuruda, and my uh, loving Elizaro fellows. And today I'm going to talk on the deformity correction and uh, uh, you know the deformity is a very important things in the human body and if you think about the history of management of the deformity of the limb you can see in the pre elizar of era the only available technique for the correction of the limb deformities were using acute correction 
there was no satisfactory treatment for severe limb deformities. Only at that time, they did the prosthetic fittings, and most of the times, they did the amputation. And then at the, at, at the end of early 50s, the Elizara popularized the principles of gradual destruction osteogenesis, that is, we call the law of uh, destruction osteogenesis, law of tension and stress. So these are the places I love to show. This is the orthopedic capital. This is our biggest institute. We, including our director, also you can see here. It's very beautiful place now. Now this is my current place. This is my local. This is Elizar of 4M, the man, meat, method, and magician. Learning Elizar is like learning a language. Teach alphabets, grammar, improve your vocabulary, vocabulary, and use it. Nobody can teach you how to write a short history, a novel, or a poem. Read biomechanics of the ring fixator, safe corridor, and the biology. Its uses and various permutations, we shall have to know. So you have so many ways to build a cat. Based on one experience and concepts, like one's language is different from others. That is video. Oh, okay. You can see here now, uh, before doing uh, for any correction of the limb, we should have to know the normal and what is abnormal. Some basic terminologies. We shall have to know the joint centers, joint lines, limb axis, and the joint orientation. Joint center, center of the hip, point in the center of the femoral head. You can see here, if you take the three points, take the three points in the femoral head, one here, one here, or one here, and connect all these and draw the perpendicular line you'll get the center of the head of the femur. Joint center, center of the distal femur, point at the top of the femoral notch, center of the proximal tibia, point between the tibial spines. You can see in the right side, center of the femoral notch, center of the tibial spines, and center of the femoral condyles, and soft tissue center, and of course, the center of the tibia. Joint center, center of the distal tibia, and mid -width, width of the tibial profound. You can see here the number one, this is center of the soft tissue, center of the bone, and center of the talus. This is the axis of the tibia. And joint lines, hip joint orientation line, tip of the trochanter, and center of the head. This is called the hip joint orientation line. And this is distal femoral joint line. These are all basic things before doing any surgery in the limb. You should have to know that. Proximal tibial joint line. If line cross the concave part of the tibia, aspect of the tibial plateau. This is the uh, joint line tibial, proximal tibial joint line. Distal tibial joint line is also very important. Line across flat tibial platform or dome of talus. Limb axis, mechanical axis, and anatomical axis. This is very important. It's a straight line that connects the joint center of the proximal and distal joint. And anatomical axis, it is the mid diaphyseal line of the bone segment. Axis of the femur, mechanical axis, it is a straight line that connects the center of the hip to the center of the distal femur. Anatomical axis is also that. It is the mid divisional line of the femur. And tibiofemoral angle, whenever, if you think about this, the angle between the anatomical and the mechanical axis of the femur, that is six degree on an average. Axis of the tibia, mechanical axis line from the center of the proximal tibia to the center of the distal tibia. In anatomical axis, mid divisional line, both the axes are almost same anatomical and mechanical axis, joint orientation angle. 
this figure, if you look at the right side, this is very important. If you look at this right side, there are four angles you can see here. On an average, this is 87, 87, this is 90, this is 90. Just to memorize in your mind, joint orientation angle, LPFA, 90 degree. This is hip joint orientation line. I draw a line here. This angle is called the lateral proximal femoral angle, ALP angle, ALPFA angle. <coughs> Normally, it is 90 degree average 95 to 90 knee joint orientation it is seen by two angles you can see uh, just now i've told you 87 here and 87 here and jlca is 0 to 2 degree joint line convergent angle 0 to 2 degree orientation angle joint orientation angle ankle joint orientation this is seen by ldta this is ldta lateral distal tibial angle normally 90 degree <coughs> now you can see here these are the four angles if you see any problem in the hip problem in the knee you should be calculate from the medial side the lateral side and problem in the ankle so now regarding the understanding of deformity correction before embarking of the deformity correction please remember is there is a deformity or is this bone is deformed we should have to know the source of the deformity it may be congenital or acquired level of the deformity and which plane of the deformity and magnitude of the deformity how much your deformity is where to do the osteotomy and what type of osteotomy you are going to do and you are going for correction the equator gradual correction and which kind of fixation, external or internal fixation. As a lizard of surgeon, we are doing the external fixation. Never operate on the wrong bone. So these are the understanding deformity correction. Before doing any surgery in the bone, you should have to keep it in your mind. Regarding the analysis, deformity and correction, uh, just think, I am okay, you are okay. That means that is everything is normal. Alignment is normal. When I am okay, you are bent. That is how to measure and define deformity. And intelligent games, that means deformity option for correction. And for treatment strategies, come lie on my couch. So this is the outline you should have to draw before doing any correction of the deformity. Approach deformity correction. Three questions have to be answered. Question number one, is the limb normal? Is the limb aligned? Question number two, if the limb is not aligned, where is the malalignment? And finally, how to correct the deformity? Is the limb normal? A normal limb is an aligned limb, hip, knee, and ankle joints all are collinear to each other. An abnormal limb, hip, knee, and ankle joints are collinear to each other. And finally, it is seen by mechanical axis deviation. You can see here the mechanical axis deviation from the left side and web a all unpublished results 4.1 to plus minus 4 mn pele a all 1994 9.7 plus minus 6.8 6.8 mm look at this this is a boeing of the femur at the same time boeing of the tibia o-shaped deformity o-shaped deformity now is the limb normal that means if the mechanical axis in its normal position the limb is aligned if there is mad mechanical axis deviation more than normal that is eight millimeter medial to the center of the knee joint limb is not aligned now uh, always before doing any surgery uh, you must keep it in your mind normal alignment parameters of the hip knee and ankle just uh, i told you here these are the angles this is the 90 degree this is you can make it to keep it in your mind 87 here is 88 87 that is 87 and this is 90 four angles then you will be able to do any kind of uh, deformity correction so melalignment test whenever you are seeing that is veras deformity and valgus deformity you can see if this deformity is valgus here 
then what you can do lateral maxis, mechanical axis deviation denotes valgus deformity here you can see here and medial mechanical axis deformity here it denotes varus deformity if this you will get valgus and this is varus now question number two if the limb is not aligned where is the malalignment if you see the your limb is not aligned you should have to find out the malalignment and identification of the location of the malalignment this is seen by joint orientation angles what are the angles this abnormal lpfa means there is a deformity of the hip i showed you earlier abnormal ldfa or mpta there is deformity at the knee and ldta there is deformity at the ankle so these are the four angles you should have to know in various mechanical ex ex mechanical axis deviation there can be depressed mpta you can see here in varus this is the varus what is going to happen mpta is less than 85 and ldfa is greater than 90 and here ldfa this is m mechanical this is m mechanical this is greater than 90 and mpta less than uh, uh, 85 so in valgus whenever you see you have a valgus knee there can be increased mpta here you can see and it will be we know normally this mpta is 87 now we are getting here 90 that means you are getting valgus mechanical axis deviation so these are the things that you should have to keep it in your mind and decrease the ldfa deformity in the distal femur both deformity both in distal femur and proximal tibia so what is the source of the deformity this is also very important source of the deformity you can see here mechanical axis deviation ldfa here 94 here is 87 we know these both are 87 it will it is 87 it will be it will say 87 but here is 94 that means deformity is here from the lateral side of the uh, distal femur and here you can see uh, mpta 82 we know mpta is 87 here we are getting mpta ldfa 94 that means deformity here and here both sides so these are the important uh, parameters angles here you can see uh, 87 is the MPTA, and here is the 8, 82 is the MPTA. So your deformity is here, proximal tibia. And here you can see JLCA is 7 degree. We know JLCA is 0 to 2 degree, and LDFA 87, but MPTA is 82. That means your deformity is middle side of proximal of the tibia and these are the malalignment source how you can identify whenever you are doing any correction try to go for a long axis of the whole limb then you will be able to understand how much you should have to calculate here mpta 87 this side is normal is 87 this is normal here is 94 that means it is abnormal it must be 87 here Lateral, lateral distal femur angle 87 this is okay but mbta is 82 and this is angulated here ldf 94 this is 82 this is abnormal this is all abnormal and glc is 7 degree and here ldf 87 this is okay but glc is increased and mbta is 82 that is it is also less this is 87 so these are the angles now rotational deformity of the tibia you just see patella forward and if your patient lies in this way you can see if you draw a line here center of the thigh so axis thigh axis this is thigh femoral axis zero this is positive this is negative you will draw a line before going going for correction of the deformity in the lower limb rotational deformity you can see dear friend rotational 45 to that side and here is the 45 to that side and hip and ankle deformity don't affect the mechanical axis deviation 
if you see the, your deformity in the proximal femur and deformity in the ankle, you will not get any kind of mechanical axis deviation. You defer mechanical axis deviation. See your center of the head and center of the ankle is okay. But you are getting LDF, LDFA 115 degree. And this is also deformed. So how to correct the deformity? Once you have measured that these are the deformities you are getting in the hip, in the knee, and in the ankle, then you should have to decide yourself how you can correct the deformity. For this, we have to identify three things. Level of Quran, that is true effects of the deformity. Level of the hinge, where you should have to place the hinge, and the level of the osteotomy. And Quran magnitude the deformity. Quran is the level of the deformity. Quran is center of rotation of angulation. Now, dear friend, you can see the normal femur and varus tibia. Upper part, femur is okay, but deformity in the tibia. You draw the line. Once you draw the line, you'll see the true effects of the deformity. That is Cora. Uh, this is the bisectal line. Cora is the intersection of the proximal bone axis. Surgeon has no control over the level of the Cora. This is very important. Bone can be divided into proximal and distal segment and below the deformity. Now, regarding the hinge, in reserve surgery, fixator, in reserve surgery, reserve fixator has broadly two components hinge by which you can correct the, any kind of deformity, hinge and pins by which we fix the Elizaro fixator to the bone. Hinge is the most important component of the Elizaro apparatus. Surgeon has control, um, complete control over the level of the hinge. If you mismatch the hinge, you will not get good correction. So, surgeon has complete control over the level of the hinge. And now speed correction of the hinges. You can see a rule of triangle is very easy. This is your uh, uh, bone deformity. This is your bone deformity. You can see here. And this is the formula. This is the formula AB uh, by AC is equal to DE by FG, 3 is to 1. You can go 3 times a day. You will, if not, 3 times a 3 degree angle. And you can correct uh, this one in this way. And normal fever and varus tibia, metaphysical deformity, you can see here, LDTA and Cora. Uh, where is the Cora? Near the joint, you can see here. So I'll talk later on the osteotomy role. Now let us see the some case. Here, malignion fracture, left upper tibia, Ujjanu Vera. Look at this from the front side. For the back side of the left tibia. Now, this is the first string in the top and distally, and we have put the uh, wires. Then you can see here the placement of the olive and the wires in the left side here, and this is the placement of the hinges. Hinges. This is the hinge, this is the hinge, this is the hinge. This is the deformity, and then you can see the here the uh, upper ring. And two, this is obliquely placed because and medially your hinge is here that you should have to go for gradual correction. Look at this. We have corrected. This is before and this is follow up after eight months. Now you can compare this one with this one. This is the axis is okay. Uh, patient is okay. Patient is happy. Now case two, look at this. 16 years old boy, whereas deformity. Left upper tibia with five centimeter LLD. And if you draw the angle here, draw the angle here, you can see this is 20 degree from the back side and from the front side. And look at this, this is okay. Now, what to do? You do a uh, put your uh, wires like this, wires like this, and this is the opening wedge osteotomy. Opening wedge, uh, regenerate bone, placement of the hinge, gradual destruction, and this is the oblique ring, and regenerate bone is going on. And finally, you can see here, from this to this, and this is the final, only after five months. So at the same time, you can go for shortening, deformity correction, 
and it could increase the quality of the bone. Now, normal femur and distal tibia varus. Normal, your femur is normal, but your distal tibia is varus. That means LDTA, normally here we know 90, you are getting 88. 88. Here, 88 LDTA. And this magnitude, that is how much you should have to correct 40 degree angle. And next you can see here, post infective left tibia with ankle varus with 10 centimeter LLD. The problems, how many problems? Ankle varus, LLD of a boy. You can see here, now uh, he's running 14, 12, 12 years, sorry, 12, 13 years. And during the treatment, you can see uh, at the age of closing the growth plate. So we uh, decided to go for this gradual osteotomy done, gradual correction, gradual correction by applying the four Elizar uh, rings. And this is a uh, good regenerative bone is going on. You can see here in the proximal and in the distal part. So this is uh, before. This is after 11 months. You can see from this, from here, both the ways here and here, the proximal tibia and the distal tibia. Now your uh, uh, excision is okay and bone regenerated bone, good regenerated bone is seen here. So, case four post operative recurvatum. You can recurvatum, you can see various deformity of right leg 30 percent you can see you cannot correct that one but patient was complaining pain see if you draw the mechanical axis and anatomical axis and here you are getting a true apex here is the true apex of the deformity then i decide to go for osteotomy by putting the 1990 hinges the 1990 hinges one ring two ring and this is the hinges i've done the osteotomy that is in the true apex of the deformity and gradual distraction and finally you can see uh, recurvatum no re after eight months follow-up so this is uh, final follow-up you can see here from this way to that way and this is the uh, thing that how we can go for correction of the illusor can you can you hear this one So we cannot hear the video sound, sir. The video oh. sound is not adequate. Yeah. So you cannot you cannot see the video sound. Look here. Now I'm I am telling. Now you can hear me. This is the true apex of the deformity, center of rotation of angulation. If you do a osteotomy in the top of the here, there is two sides. One is the convex side, and below is the convex side. Then gradual you go for distraction, then you are correcting the deformity and as well as you are getting that new regenerate bone. Line is collinear. This is osteotomy rule number one. This is osteotomy rule number one. If you tr uh, go for true effects of the deformity, do the osteotomy in the top of the convex side and gradual correction you will not get any translation and any rotation Now this is the case, this is your deformity. If you put your hinge away from the coda, you will get a, this kind of displacement.
sir, uh, can you hear us, sir? I think uh, uh, there is a network problem uh, in uh, uh, Barisar's side. Uh, his, uh, yes, sir. Uh, no, nobody can. Uh, can nobody you see? Yeah, 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 Barry, sir. Oh. Yeah. Now, now you can see. Yes, sir. We can see you, sir. Then you are getting compression type of deformity correction. Short. But you put your hinge away far away from the true apex of the deformity. If you do the osteotomy here, then you are getting wide range of and you are making a displacement. So placement of the hinge is very important. True apex of the deformity, then and you go for visual distraction and what you get get see is coming up proximal and this one is that means you are going for displacement translation and if you put your hinge in the Front and top. You are getting this kind of displacement, and this proximal is getting below, and this tile is coming up. Positions. So, uh, osteotomy level one, surgeon has relative control over the level of the osteotomy site. It depends on the condition of the bone and the soft Now, rules of osteotomy. See, rule one, when you're, this is the rule one, this is the axis, you are going for this, then you are getting this way, seeing the true apex, or you remove a part you are getting this kind of uh, correction. This is remo removing the wedge. Rule two, this is your bisector line, aka at Cora. And then if you put your hinge below the level of the true apex of the deformity, you will get this kind of correction. Which angle? and a little bit translation and this is the quick translation seventy degree normally you should have to know LDT lateral distal tibial angle ninety degree then you have remained twenty degree See, you can carry this one to get the line. This is the axis to get uh, 20 degree correction. You like this. And after that, you can move plate or anything here. But with the lizard, it is very easy to apply. So, this is normal tibia and ferrous femur. And you can see normal tibia. Now I'm talking about the ferrous femur. And this is case number five. You can see here ferrous femur with implant failure in situ with three centimeter LLD. Policeman he was treated elsewhere. Then you can see the here, left side, 20 degree angulation. Now see the X-ray, he was treated elsewhere. With this, plate was broken, deformity here, then came to my place. I removed all this, put this with the Lizarov. You can see here, approximately only chance, here are only the wires. Then patient was, Working with the apparatus, 
this is the beauty of elizaro you can see if you put apply apply the elizaro properly patient will not complain anything and after six months follow-up because surgery was done two times three times here to me one time and before to my place two times as a result what we have seen we have seen the knee stiffness that is the contracture of the knee with a little bit deformity jlca here you can see a little bit increase here normal jlca then see here after uh, uh, 11 months patient came to my place this is before this is after now this is with this to this situation now patient is willing to go for bending the knee and we can do that because we know this is plastic now you can see on the table 90 degree this is almost okay now you can see here uh, big operations but five steps operations nothing to be worried for that so now you can see after four months patient is happy 90 degree can flex after treatment sagittal brain deformity also you can see here these are the different angles how we can correct this is also you can see a jlc is three degree jlc here is three degree mpta 80 it must be 87 ldfn 95 now you can carry this one eight degree and 12 degree jlc see here now multiple deformity whenever you see the any segment there are two or three deformities how you can correct this one you can see very easy you can calculate and here you can see here 35 degree 35 degree magnitude here is 37 degree magnitude draw a line here draw a line here here also same axis axis this is the connecting point then you can gradual correction to go for mechanical axis in this way 35 37 degree and finally you can see here LPF you are getting 90, LDPA you are getting 87, 87, four angles 87, 87, this is 90 and this is 90. Just 90, top, below 90, in the knee, opposite, 87, 87. So you can correct your deformity easily. Uh, defining deformity, you can see here, femur, joint orientation line, I told you in starting point of my lecture, these are the joint orientation angles, proximal distal, mechanical axis lines, and you should have to determine the cora and of course the uh, measure the angulatory deformity now you can see here this is multiple deformity tibia and femur both uh, you must draw the angles if you take the full axis uh, limb that is good and i am taking full x uh, x-ray uh, in my center all all the time femur hip and knee uh, and ankle so see uh, done the osteotomy placement of the hinges you can see here this is follow-up only after six months bone quality uh, was bad now you can see here from front side from back side front and easily now we can see the axis full axis so dear friend this is after uh, three years follow-up mm. by Elizarov technique doing the Elizarov surgery the O type uh, O type deformity uh, this is you can see here multiple deformity uh, I'm going to finish within a short time this you can see again you should have to draw the angles you can see the patella tracking during correction with biocompatible thin weights uh, because bone quality, bone is osteoporotic, vitamin D deficiency, and that's why it is better to go for uh, Elizara wires. And then you can see, after correcting the deformity, see the bone is not good. You can go for nailing. Sometimes very difficult to go for nailing or plate. You cannot hold the plates with the plates. So, and this is the final multiple deformity government teacher of a government hospital bcs cadre at the age of 32 he came to a place to go for deformity correction and i took it as a challenge because age is too much 
and you can see if when you cover virus genuval gum bilateral patella tracking problems but patient was very much cooperative and only with wires you can see with placement of the proper placement of the hinges and during treatment and this is now see he is happy from that situation to this situation from that situation to this situation patient is happy and bone quality you can draw the axis of the whole limb you can see hip knee and angle a little bit deformity is still there in the angle but he is getting physiotherapy now from this situation to assistant professor of a government college now from that situation to this situation it is a great achievement uh, for uh, the people those who are uh, who can who, we can help a little bit with this uh, kind of elizaro magical elizaro and this is my end and finally i would like to tell dear friends elizaro fixated and his biological principles of gradual destruction revolutionized the management of the limb deformities what are the important things alld bone and joint contractures soft tissue contractures bone loss delayed and non unions infections transverse destruction you can go that is you can make the bone widen and of course the you can save the ischemic limbs thank you so much for your kind attention thank you so much again thank you very much sir thank you for your beautiful presentation and i think uh, that was an excellent presentation for all level doctors uh, and we learn many things uh, from your lectures uh, again thank from all doctors of the subcontinent as well as the uh, junior forum of elizarb now i would like to request uh, professor gonimulla sir Uh, to share his knowledge uh, regarding the deformity correction by Elizarov, we all know that uh, you are doing a uh, lots of Elizarov, uh, so you have uh, lots of experience regarding the uh, deformity correction as well as the other experiences also. So, sir, would you please think, uh, share your valuable knowledge with us? Uh, uh, thank you very much, Nambi. Uh, I think uh, Professor Nobika will say the first, huh? uh, because he was our guest, and uh, I will. Speak in the last. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Then, okay. Uh, some sort of the next, uh, last of all, um, I. So okay. in this regime, you try to follow it. Professor Novikov from Moscow. Uh, from Kurgan. From Kurgan. From Kurgan. Yes, Kurgan is a very beautiful place. We went there in on time with Professor Badi, and you are coming to Bangladesh also. So we are a, a very good friend to each other. So I think uh, I would like to request Professor Nobikov to share your experience regarding the deformity correction uh, and uh, corrected by the Elizaro method. So I would like to request Professor Nobikov from Kurgan. Thank you, thank you, Professor. And uh, today I am uh, too much learn from my friend. my teacher from bali and uh, the method of elizarov give us uh, possibilities study all of our life because any doctor in any country has patient with deformity and uh, when we have knowledge when we have principle knowledge about deformity about level of uh, deformity level of correction apex uh, deformity and when we have excellent possibilities during the treatment not after surgery during the treatment after one week after one month on the end of treatment Elizarov methods and Elizarov frame give us possibilities correct any problem because uh, today I have few patient from Moscow seven months ago doctor start lengthening before surgery patient have deformity but on the end of lengthening patient have deformity because 
all period of uh, lengthening patient was alone without control of doctor and on the finish patient has some problems Elizaro frame give us possibilities to go away from this problem and anytime when we uh, touch femur or tibia with uh, Elizaro methods we can correct any um, uh, many plane deformity or uni deformity and I am happy because uh, your country, India, in other country, just now uh, start use this method methods, and we understand you. And one more, Elizara frame give us possibilities uh, follow not only uh, anatomical uh, rules. Elizara frame give us possibilities uh, finish treatment with individual result because sometimes when we have one side deformity in other side is normal if we will follow uh, treatment by anatomical angles like now we explain dr barry on the end of treatment we will have different shape of uh, legs when we make photo, x-rays before treatment, and when we know uh, all of angles uh, in other side, during the treatment, we will follow uh, individual angles of the patient. And I am happy because just now we uh, talk with one language, not English language. We talk with Elizabeth language and many doctors in the world understand us. Barry, another doctor, dear colleagues, I am very happy and uh, I think after this, many doctors will follow us because today we need to think about what will be in the future. And our message, Elizabeth, this is not Elizarov just now, this is uh, for all of the world, for all of the patient in the world, and we can help with uh, con conference, uh, with webinar like this, we can uh, communicate directly when patient uh, have some problem, doctor, ask another doctor, and we can very uh, quickly support for this doctor. Thank you for you. I am happy because uh, more than 10 webinars uh, and all of time uh, so many doctor has real interest for our collaboration. Thank you. And I uh, want invite you for our Elizara of reading what will be in this June when we will celebrate century of our father of Elizarov. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for your nice speech. Now, I would like to request uh, Dr. Shamsul Huda, sir, to share his experience regarding the deformity correction by Elizarov. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tanuri. Thank you, sir, Dari, sir, Avikov, sir, Mukula, sir. So, Elizarov has been a real boon as far as I feel in the in deformity, all cases deformity correction, whether in adults or pediatric cases, no other device can do it well because we need to attain a normal mechanical axis, maintain length, do the normal deformity corrections. Besides Elizabeth, these days I'm also uh, doing uh, lengthening of a nail and in cases of ortho ECV also, and in some cases with LRS. So altogether I've seen that nothing is better than Elizabeth that gives a normal uniform correction and natural correction, sir. Thank you, sir. Very much uh, for your short speech. Uh, now I'd like to request the uh, honorable professor and the president of Bangladesh Orthopedic Society, Professor Gonemula, sir, to uh, say something regarding our topic. Thank you very much. And I'm happy 
to be here and see the learned speaker and also our friend Navigov and our junior friend Mr. Samsuluda from India. Thanks the honorable and reverend teacher, Professor Bari. His expertise is coming from Kurgan. Once upon a time, there are the surgeons, particularly the orthopedic surgeons, are very much worried. The, the how much we can do the deformity correction in the deformed foot, ankle, particularly in the virus deformity, particularly uh, both the sides and the, in on side, femur, genovirus, genovalgum and equinocabovirus deformity in the leg also. Our senior teachers are very much worried in that time and they have tried to oral uh, open direction an internal physician by Rashvin or any other internal physician device. But 50% of the uh, result of 50% is bad. The 50% is the infection and the implant failure of that. And our aim and objective is to correction of the deformity is not well corrected. When Elizabeth is coming up in the middle of the 70s or the middle of the 80s, after coming back from Professor Bari from Gurgaon, coming back from Gurgaon to the different parts of the country and in our National Institute in Detroit. Our doctors are very much happy and the patients are also happy. And we learn some things from the books, something from the teachers and something from Professor Bari. Now our teacher, uh, teachers, our junior doctors, particularly our resident doctors are very much interested in the deformity correction. We have a very heavy headache to a genuvalgum, genuvirus deformity in the both the sides, and at the same time, the genu uh, equine capovirus deformity. Once upon a time, we do not know about the, we do not, we do not take the, uh, in, in the mental consideration, take the consideration that we have to, we have to think into axis and the cora. But we, we must, we now, we are, uh, alert to be axis and the Quora. Once upon a time, our doctors is not um, uh, at all known to about the Quora. When Barishai or the professor of Nidor, when I was speaking, somebody's, most of the people are annoyed with him. Most of the doctors are annoyed with him and they are very much angry. The, what you are thinking, what you are doing, what you are, what is your objective? Everywhere there is a little of, everywhere there is a little of. And Professor Bari was puzzled sometimes. I, as his junior friend and brother, I always support him because I'm very much interested for his biomechanical, biomechanical, biotechnological, and orthopedic osteosynthetic fellow in the country. And that's why after that, now all the doctors are very much cooperative than each other in all the respects, particularly the other magnitude also. So today's topics, I am very much, very much amazed. Uh, before that, many of the lectures from Professor Bari and others, I myself do the Elizabeth also. You know that I am also the Secretary General of him. I may be the president of the society, but I am the secretary of Professor Bari. And I try to do something. And when I am puzzled to anything for correction of the limb, then I refer the case to Professor Bari. But still, still our doctors are not 100% confident to the Elizabeth application and know the axis and Quora. Uh, in, in the deformity correction. They send to the senior doctors, they are open the 
they are export the uh, 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 kora, they are export the uh, deform deform side and doing a nail or doing a blade still now. But time is demanding, time is going ahead. So gradually deformity correction and managed by Elizabeth application is going uh, a first in the like the advanced countries. So in this opportunity, I would like to uh, yeah, convey my bless, convey my salam, and convey my best regards to Professor Bari, honored professor, because of the tremendous activities regarding the Elizara and the final, uh, uh, final uh, ultimate solution of the uh, deformity, deformity correction and others' problem, particularly the infective non union, it is by headache. It is my headache only, infective non-union. So, I convey my best salam to Novikov and also Samson Uda and also uh, Dr. Thanbir Ashraf, the young guys, young good orthopedic surgeons, the consultant of orthopedics in Nitor. He has many dimension also. He has very good arthroscopic surgeons. So, uh, I think we, uh, I think, uh, Kurgan is our best center. When coming back to Bari, then we, it is very much possible to do many things uh, by by the doctors of Bangladesh, by the orthopedic surgeons of Bangladesh. So we have made a good relation with Kurgan, with Kurgan by uh, Professor Bari. He is our breeze. And our doctors, I myself went to Kurgan, visiting Kurgan, and see what they were doing. So I think uh, these, are, these, these are the nutshell. Uh, and uh, in this lesson, uh, we must in, in interested and inspire our junior colleagues and junior doctors to all of them are no, not the reserve surgeons, but there should be minimum, they should be learned some things. But there is no solution. There is no solution. There is a solution of uh, uh, Elizabeth. So in this regards, I, I, I would again uh, like to pay my promise, uh, pay my regards to my teacher and my senior colleagues, Professor Barisar, Novikov, and my best wishes to Mr. Samsuluda. With the few words, I would conclude my speech. Thanks, Mr. Uh, Tanvir and thanks Ras TV by the help of you and your media. We are discussing a good chapter in the orthopedics, <coughs> though still it is, it is <coughs> not in the all level of the country. But if we start it from our NATO National Institute, tertiary hospital in the different parts of the country, then it will be very easy possible to go through the village level also. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You. Thank you for your excellent you, speech. You, uh, yes, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, definitely uh, it's a blessing uh, for us to have a professor like you. Uh, without your encouragement, uh, we cannot improve. We cannot make this orthopedic solution academy. So thank you very much again, sir, for being with us and for inspiring us. Yeah, uh, uh, Dr. Shamsul sir, want to say something? Uh, we have uh, a very uh, we have we have been time constrained. So uh, within thirty minutes, uh, thirty seconds, you have to finish here. Uh, thank you. Just just as I want to add one word that. Uh, now, in all my deformity cases, I use uh, the whole Ninja app that I learned from Baltimore to calculate all the deformities. That makes the uh, calculations very easy, exact, and uh, pre of planning very easy. That's just what to write. Thank you. Professor Navikab, sir. Uh, thank you, Professor Goni Mula, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shamsul, sir. And uh, finally, I want to thank uh, the magical speaker, Professor Mofakarul Bari, sir, for being with us. And I am Dr. Mahmoud Tanvir Ashraf. want to thank Raj TV and definitely the Renata Pharmaceuticals Limited for sponsoring our programs. 
I uh, hope uh, we will meet you in the next Friday. Uh, till then, I want to say assalamu alaikum and bye bye to all the viewers of Orthopedic Solution Academy. Bye bye. Thank you you are watching Raj TV. Jagorone, Bangladesh. Please subscribe our channel.